What's it going to feel like with the Arizona Cardinals having the offense as their strength for 2022? Plus Matt Money Smith, NFL Network, uh, Petros and Money Show in LA. He's going to join me for two segments. The big guests keep on coming, baby. Alex Lancey, Locked On Cardinals. Here we go. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AC Cards. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Just search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that sub. Get those notifications, man. We are blowing this baby uh, this isn't the offseason. The NFL doesn't have an offseason. And I'm here for you and with you for every step of the way. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. Had Mina Kimes on Monday, had Mike Golden Jr. on Tuesday, Matt Money Smith from the NFL Network, play by play guy for the LA Chargers. And part, and you know, he's 50% of the Petros and Money Show, one of the most renowned radio shows on the planet. He's going to join me for two segments to talk Cardinals offseason and to talk to Cardinals as it relates to the Los Angeles Chargers because even though you know it may not seem like there are similarities there are and he's one of the smartest dudes in the business you'll be want you, you want to make sure to stay for the next you know 26 minutes because I just recorded that part and dude the guy is a genius okay so well, you can also check me out on Thursdays locked on NFL national show with Tyler Rowland from locked on Titans we're gonna have fun this Thursday as well. So uh, I haven't really just dumbed it down and talked about how the offense for the Arizona Cardinals is going to be the strength in 2022. And that is effing exciting. Putting your fan hat on, having the offense be the focal point of this team where it seemed it, it was like window dressing that that was going to be the case until we got into the actual knit and grit of the season and the defense led the charge. Now you may not want to see that initially because the Cardinals were putting up a 40-burger in Tennessee, a whole bunch of points in Cleveland on the road last year, in Minnesota, at at home, etc. The defense was the catalyst for many of those points on the road last year. The defense was incredible during the first 12 or 13 weeks of the season. And even when they started losing games, it wasn't necessarily the defense's fault. Losing Marco Wilson, losing J.J. Watt, it was difficult. But when you look at you know, the overall year, the defense was more trustable, trustworthy than the offense second one of the season through the last second of the season. It just was. And when we're looking at now tipping the stale, Steve Kime, the overcorrector extraordinaire, the offense is going to be the focal point. The offense is going to be the strength. And we're going to find out if Cliff Kingsbury is worth his weight in, you know, carb-free snack cakes or whatever he eats to keep that physique. You know, we're going to find out very quickly what this offensive scheme is made of because most of the good players on the roster for the Arizona Cardinals are on the offensive side of the ball. Sure, you've got Buda Baker. Sure, you've got Byron Murphy. Sure, you've got J.J. Watt. Sure, you've got Isaiah Simmons. I'm naming players, but in the hierarchy of talent and importance to the roster, obviously Kyler Murray one, probably Rodney Hudson two, James Conner three, DeAndre Hopkins four, DJ Humphrey, or, you know, Buda Baker probably five, but in the top three, it's mostly offensive players. So I know that I've been tough this offseason on Steve Kime and his, in my opinion, inability to build a balanced roster. And I still hold true to that. I also think that one of the fruits of that labor, one of the yields of that stock purchase is the offense is going to be talented to all hell. Hollywood Brown. Obviously, I didn't add him. He's probably in the top three. Um, Trey McBride going to take the place of Zach Ertz in the next year or two. If not this year, we'll see. I mean, if we had a Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard situation, that'd be sweet. The Cardinals are going to have so much firepower on offense that putting a fan hat on, it's going to be popcorn TV Terrell Owens stuff to watch. And I only say Terrell Owens because he did the popcorn thing. Did the popcorn with the cheerleader, the, the you know, the pom-poms. He did the popcorn. Terrell Owens is one of the best. It doesn't matter. It's going to be must-see television. And they're going to score a lot of points. And sweet. 
that's going to be fun. I just thought we needed to take five minutes and really understand what the fruits, what the yield of the overcorrection that Steve Kime has presented the Arizona Cardinals roster with trading for Hollywood Brown and drafting Trey McBride instead of getting two impact defensive players in the first two rounds is going to bear, and it's going to be awesome. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals, Matt Money, Smith, NFL Network, Petros and Money, play-by-play guy for the Chargers, is going to join me in the next two segments. Dude, this guy, I could listen to this guy talk football all day long. That's next, Locked on Cardinals, first, Bilt Bar. Bilt Bar. Hold on, you know what I'm going to do right here? I left you. I'm back now. I'm back now. Don't worry. I'm back. So these are birthday cake puffs, 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, nine grams of sugar. Okay. These things, I eat one every morning because they're not like candy bars. Okay. They're covered in chocolate. This is white chocolate. They've got the, you know, the, the, the sprinkle magic. Okay. They're, it's protein infused marshmallow. Like, all, like, no joke. These things are incredible. I mean, I, I know you're worried that I left, but I'm back. So, Built.com, they've got you covered with everything. This is just the one they're featuring now. We get boxes sent to us. It's awesome. And I don't just talk about them because I'm supposed to. I talk about Built Bar. My dad's on the Built Bar train. People will send me, Mike Frey, you get your shout out. Like, people that listen to Lockdown Cardinals and have for a long time, they buy Built Bars because they're the best tasting protein bar on the planet, and they're good for you. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Second segment, Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. We had Mina Kimes Monday, Mike Golick Jr. Tuesday, and one of the best voices in football. Great, uh, great name around the NFL Network. Matt Money Smith joins you. Matt, dude, thank you for joining me. I yeah, you got it, Alex. And obviously, you can check them out 3 to 7 p.m. Petros and Money, one of the longest running shows in LA, 570 in LA. Um, I grew up there. I mean, I, I've listened to Petros and you for a long time. So um, Thanks, I, I brought you on for two reasons. One, okay. I, wanted, I want you to put your national media member hat on for the first segment and talk to me about the Arizona Cardinals offseason. The second segment, we're going to talk about, because I've compared on Twitter and on the show, the Chargers offseason with the Cardinals handling of the Kyler Murray rookie scale contract. Obviously, vastly different with draft picks trades, you know, free agent signings, et cetera. But let's put your national media member hat on here. From okay. afar, the Arizona Cardinals have had a spat with Kyler Murray in the front office and obviously seems to have subsided. Obviously things to seem to be on the up and up. Two, they traded away their first round pick for Hollywood Brown. And obviously it came out after the DeAndre Hopkins was going to be out for the first six weeks. And they drafted maybe the best tight end in the draft while having many other needs to fill out this, fill, fill out this roster. I'm looked at as yeah. being harsh with the, on this on this roster on this team. Give me a positive slant <laughs> on what we've seen this offseason from the Cardinals. I mean, I don't know if I I don't know if I'll just kind of give you a positive slant. I don't know if I can give you one. Um, <laughs> kind of my takeaway is is that that Cliff's got a lot of power. You know that that when it comes to to Steve Kahn building a team, um, he's giving you know Coach Kingsbury what he wants. You know, and that's a lot of offense when. You know, I looked at that defense and they got issues. You, you lose Chandler Jones, you don't replace him. You use your number one, you know, when it was deep. This, this draft was deep in pass rushes. I know they got Cam Thomas, and I like Cam Thomas. I think he's probably going to be a great value in the third. But you could have probably drafted, you know, a pretty darn good pass rusher, you know, or a secondary player, you know, right there. And they opted to trade it for Hollywood Brown to sort of calm those those rough waters of, of Kyler Murray, you know, and make him happy. And I would assume make Cliff Kingsbury happy, knowing he's not going to have DeAndre Hopkins for six weeks. That's a huge hit. Um, I like Rondale Moore, you know. I I just, you know, I, I think the difference between the Chargers and the Cardinals in the off seasons, Chargers last year, they identified we have got an issue on the offensive line. They signed the number one center in the league, Corey Lindsley, to the richest center contract. They signed Matt Filer. They signed Ode Abushi. They drafted Rashawn Slater. I mean, they have four new starters on that offensive line to replace what was the worst unit in the league. Uh, the defense was a disaster last year. Run defense, third down defense. What do they do? They go out, they sign J.C. Jackson, the number one corner on the market. They trade for Khalil Mack to get that other edge rusher. Like, 
to me, they have, they were like, these are our issues. Let's go resolve them. We'll use all this money. And then that way, when we get to the draft and it's pick 17 and we feel like there's 13 first round talents and Zion Johnson's one of them, let's snatch them up because we don't need to draft a corner. Like I was fine. I, I figured they were going to take McDuffie and then mm -hmm. they signed, you know, JC Jackson. And I know they, they feel like there's flexibility with Asante Samuel. So like that to me is what the, what the chargers did to me with the, the cards did. And I think it's just, it's hard for people to, to kind of get into a war room and figure out what does that top 150 look like? What does the horizontal board look like? Was Trey McBride so far ahead on their board than anybody else at that pick? Cause he, you know, by all accounts seemed to be the number one full service tight end in the draft that they just were like, well, we got to take them. I mean, the value's there, but to me, that's just Cliff, Kyler, we want to make sure you're humming and then we'll figure everything else out. And I think they still got some figuring out to do. Sure. It's a fluid situation. Matt Money Smith yeah. at Money Smith on Twitter, Petros and Money every day, 570 L, um, in LA, uh, play by play for the Los Angeles Chargers in that brand new spanking stadium, SoFi Stadium. Um, I've been, I've been rough and I've, I'm really trying to kind of see the positives in where they drafted. I mean, obviously, and traded for Steve Kime is an overcorrector. I mean, Steve Wolf to Cliff Kingsbury may be the biggest overcorrection from defense to offense that we've seen, especially with two guys who weren't necessarily equipped to be head coaches at the time they were head coaches. Now, having Hollywood Brown, having Trey McBride, having Zach Ertz, having DeAndre Hopkins when he's back, having Rondell Moore, having yep. A.J. Green, James Conner, the list goes on, and Kyler Murray, one of the more electric quarterbacks in the NFL, this should be the strength of this team where it hasn't necessarily been the last two years, one of my favorite things to say, not anymore because I kind of put it to bed, is if Cliff Kingsbury, if the offense isn't the strength of the Arizona Cardinals, why is Cliff Kingsbury the head coach? And I feel yeah. like the contract extension is there. Kyler Murray's going to get an extension. Now they're forcing the issue to make it work. Do you think that with things here, with DeAndre, say DeAndre Hopkins wasn't suspended, would this offense work in this day and age of the NFL? Look, I, I believe in Kyler Murray. I think he's exceptional. I mean, I, I think he is an absolute nightmare for defensive coordinators to game plan for. And I think he's only going to get better, you know? So, like, for me, that's – once you have that position, you know, you're good. You are good. You, you know, you – because he's able – look, the O-line, I'm still a little ugh, on the O-line. You know, they bring in Will Hernandez. They're trying to kind of plug those – and that's fine. You know, to me, like, like O-line, you can get away with it if you got a good O-line coach. And if you've just got an – like, with someone as talented as Kyler – just make sure it's average. You can't have any holes. You know, if you've got a hole, okay, now we got an issue. If you got two holes, we got a real issue. But if it's average, he's going to light it up. Um, that's not necessarily, you know, my concern. I like the offense. You know, yeah, I'm a little worried about DeAndre being out the first six weeks. And, you know, you got a rough start. You got what, the Raiders, the Rams, the Chiefs. I mean, yeah. coming out the gate, you know how it is. You start slow and you're you're one and two or 0 oh and three. And now you got a real issue. Like that's when... Like, so that's the my only concern with him being out the first six games is what a rough go. At least those I think two of the three are at home, right? Rams and Chiefs, yes. I think, are at home. Yeah. So, you know, so that's my one concern there about DeAndre being out is the way the schedule kind of lays out there at the start, those first three games. But, like, I just want to see something from the defense. You know, like, is Isaiah, is Isaiah Simmons as great as we thought he was? Like, dude, this is 2020 this is what a defender is supposed to look like. This hybrid linebacker safety that can play, you know, a Derwin James with an extra 20 pounds on him kind of thing. We just haven't seen it quite yet. We see flashes, you know, and then they go back and get Zayvon Collins the following year. And it's like, okay, what are we doing here? Like what, what is the vision for how this all works? And you let Chandler Jones go and just, I'm, um, that's where I'm focused. It's like, what is that side of the ball look like? The offense is going to score points. I have no doubt about that. Matt Money Smith, NFL Network. Uh, play by play guy for the Chargers. You know, he does wears a whole bunch of hats. Pedros and Money, one of the best shows in LA, long time running. Um, I want to hit the defense next because the Chargers defense was top heavy and has been for the last couple of years. Even when Melvin Ingram was there, he was an yeah. apple of my eye. Another one at even at, at an advanced age, I think he'd be would have been a great addition to the to the uh Cardinals before he signed elsewhere a few days ago. I want to hit the defense next as it pertains to where the where the Chargers were, to where they are now. Maybe that's in line for where the Cardinals are when they have more cap space coming up next season. Matt Money Smith joining me for one more segment here on Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy, follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. BetOnline.net. Talked about it all the time. 
They're the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info, latest odds, news, sports development, bonkers NBA playoffs, bonkers NFL playoffs, fights, NF- NFL futures. Like over-unders are insane for win-loss if, if you want to put some cheese down this early. But BetOnline's got you covered. They're a continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Go to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Final segment, Locked on Cardinals. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. I am Alex Clancy. He is Matt Smith, Matt Money Smith, Petros and Money, play-by-play guy for the Chargers. Dude, you wear a lot of hats, having a lot of fun out there in L.A. Um, we, you talked a little bit earlier about how the Chargers have filled the holes this offseason. And Justin Herbert, obviously on his rookie scale contract, they've done the protection thing on the left side of the line with Zion Johnson and Rashawn Slater. They gave Corey Lindsay a whole bunch of money, which is something the Cardinals were able to avoid with Rodney Hudson because they said, you know what? Don't void that contract. We'll give you a third round pick. We don't want to go into this whole deal of giving him $40 million guaranteed. So they were able to skirt that and get an all pro center. So that was one huge move Steve Kime has made, but the defense and Steve Kime's rosters over pretty much the entirety of his tenure have been fairly top heavy with your pillar stars. And then, some kind of lesser than a Brandon Williams from Texas A&M running back started alongside Patrick Peterson week one handful of years ago. That's kind of where we've been. The Cardinals lost Chandler Jones. So they've got Buda Baker. You've got Byron Murphy. Love him. You yeah. know, yeah, sure. So you've got your Pacific Northwest DBs, but the rest is, is Isaiah Simmons, as you mentioned, going to take that leap. He was built in a lab. Are they going to learn from the Asan Reddick experiment where they didn't move him to the right spot until it was too late and then he went to Carolina, and now he's getting a whole bunch of cheese in Philly. What do you make of what they have on defense now, J.J. Watt? They signed Kinsey Kiki from, from Green Bay for a little interior line out. What do you – what does Vance Joseph have to work with? Um, look, he's got some – like I said, he's got some talented pieces. I mean, you know, you can't argue with, with Isaiah Simmons. And, you know, you just named the three big, you know, big talented pieces on that roster, right? Buda Baker and – and Marlon and, and Byron Murphy and and uh, Isaiah Simmons. Like, those are the big three to me. And J.J. Watt, look, J.J. looked good last year, but how much mm-hmm. of that is a product of Chandler Jones being one of the best pass rushers in the league? You know, I think there's probably a little bit of that there. I think everything else we're really, you know, projecting this. I kind of got it up in, in front of me. You know, like, Marcus Golden's been serviceable mm-hmm. his career. I I don't – I mean, again, we just got to see it from Zayman Collins. You know, is, is there consistency there? Can he be game in, game out, like we asked about Isaiah Simmons in his rookie year? Um, a, a contributor, or is he going to get hunted? Um, not a big, you know, Devon Kennard, okay. You know what I mean? It's kind of like like Vance is a great – Coach Joseph is a great coordinator, you know? So that's where you kind of put your faith. Like, okay, can he, can he kind of get this together? Can, can he get the pieces that he's been given? You know, and I think Cam Tom, like I said, I think Cam Thomas and any other draft is going to be pushed up the board, but because it was so pass rusher heavy, you end up getting a good value there. Um, but you know, that's someone that was really productive in in college, so I, I like that pick. Um, you know, Jeff Gladney, I mean, obviously serious character issues, mm-hmm. um, serious. <laughs> so that's that's a huge swing on. Okay. He's talented. We're going to take some heat for a week in the media. Uh, is he a is he an okay guy? Is he a terrible guy? And we're just going to throw him off the team, you know, within a couple of weeks. I don't know. Let's take a flyer because we need help, you know. And the guy certainly was talented as hell at, at Texas uh, TCU, but just turned out to be a nightmare. Um, so, like that's just that's what I see, right? I see a, a bunch of pieces that are, you know, some of them are like you know the raw talent. Like, you know the raw talent is there for Isaiah Simmons. I, look, uh, to come clean, I was, I was enamored with Tua. I was, uh, I was a Tua guy. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, you know, if Tua gets snatched up. And, and look, I, not that I'm making excuses for myself, but, you know, Cristobal did not use Herbert the right way. You know, when right. he came in, he was a one read and take off guy. Do not turn the ball over at all costs. Like, we just did not see what we now Nobody see. Nobody saw it. And, yeah. yeah and how, so I was a, hey, Go get Isaiah Simmons at number six and get freaking Jalen Hurts in the second round. Like, that's how I loved Isaiah Simmons at Clemson. Absolutely loved him. So, if that, if that, look, if you can crack that code, then yeah, dude, you're good. You know, yeah. but it's, it's a lot of, it's like going back to your point before the break there with the Chargers. Like, 
Brandon Staley had pieces that did not fit what he wanted to do. And, and he was trying to make it work and he was trying to adjust over the course and it just didn't work. And so this off season, he basically said, look, this is what I need. Can we make it happen? Yes. I need a lockdown man to man zone, full service corner. Okay. Here you go. Most expensive contract on the market. JC Jackson done. I need a guy uh, opposite Joey that knows my system, you know, not, and look, you, you signed, uh, I think, didn't you guys, who'd you guys, oh no, you guys signed, um, you signed Vigil, right? I think not, not Fackrell. Mm -hmm. I think you guys got Nick Vigil, who I like yeah. a lot as a depth linebacker, yeah. but, um, but like, you know, they didn't have that guy opposite Joey and it was just an issue all year long. Chenna had some great flashes and I believe in Chenna. I think he's going to be a great player, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it was Joey that let him down, how the, the system just wasn't working. The interior of the line was a mess. And they, they basically said, okay, here's Sebastian Joseph Day. Here's Austin Johnson. We're going to give up our two for Khalil Mack. Now your front is completely rebuilt. You know, you got Drew Tranquil at linebacker, and we're going to draft JT Woods in the third. So now you put a lid on the defense with Nas, and Derwin becomes that sort of Isaiah Simmons. Just he's everywhere. He's a queen. So, like, that's – like, I can see that. I can't see the Cardinals right now. How the S are all of those players starting on the Chargers at one time? They've got one of the most potent offenses yeah. in the NFL. I don't, I'm still on the Justin Jackson train for a backup running back for the Cardinals. Like, I don't know why he's gone completely. There's no blip of the radar yeah. on that. Because he can't stay healthy, Alex. He can't. Yeah. Like, but when if, he's in he's... there, he's great. But when you've got a guy that's active and he gets hurt on the second snap, now you're toast. It's like, oh, what the heck? Now, now we've got to play. And that's what would repeatedly happen is he'd be active on game day. He'd get one or two carries, and now he's out for the rest of the game. And you're down to two backs, and now Austin's taking an extra workload. Mm. And because that guy won't go down, he takes a beating over the course of a game, yeah. and he's beat to hell. And so they're like, we, just, we love Justin Jackson. He's a hell of a player, but he can't stay on the field. And even worse, he's healthy at kickoff. And then he gets hurt, you know, in the first quarter and you, and it just happened over and over and over again. So, you know, that's why they drafted um, Isaiah Spiller, you know, and, and they, and, and I'll give them credit. I'll give Tom Telesco credit. Like he's, he keeps going it every year. All right. We've got to find that second back. Let's try Justin Jackson. Okay. He got hurt. Let's try Josh Kelly. Not quite there. Let's try Larry Roundtree. Not quite there. Mm -hmm. Let's try Isaiah Spiller. He'll keep throwing because he knows it's, it's so important for this offense to get that second back because once you have it and now you can play two at the same time and you can have them in the backfield and you can flex Austin out into the slot all of a sudden, now you're host because that dude can run freaking wheel routes like a wide receiver. He can run slot routes like a slot receiver. He's strong enough to ward off safeties, even though he's small. Like, so that's kind of what their vision is, you yeah. know? And, and look, I spent a lot more time with the chargers than I do the Cardinals. Yeah, so, I, you know, it's hard for me to see, but Matt, yeah. like they're similar. Matt money Smith, that money Smith on Twitter, uh, Pedro some money three to seven, money through Friday, play by play for the Chargers. Like, and again, for those that are just tuning in right now, I brought Matt on because the comparisons between what the Cardinals did and what the Chargers are doing with a rookie scale contract that was exactly the same is palpable. The difference. Well, it's funny, you know palpable. what, Alex? I'll I'll jump in there because I want to I want to make sure I credit because I just heard it and it blew me away when I heard it. I think it was um, I want to say it was Robert Robert Mays from the Athletic that mm -hmm. uh, that I heard on on his pod. Great follow. He brought it up and it, it truly floored me. I think he said the Cardinals are third, I believe third or second in percentage of cap spent on offense. And when you think about that, and you think about the fact that their quarterback is making $11 million and yet they are third and you've got the Packers that are paying, you know, you got the Browns that are paying Deshaun Watson, $43 million. Mm -hmm. The Packers are paying, Aaron Rodgers, $50 million at quarterback, $40 million more than the Cardinals are paying Kyler Murray. And they're the third highest offensive percentage of cap. Like that tells you all you need to know. This is a yeah. team that believes we're going to outscore teams. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go out there and we are going to win games 35 to 28, 28 to 24, 31 to 28. That's how we're going to win games uh, because that's how we're going to build it. And, and that's just, you know, we're going to sink money here and we're going to probably bleed a little bit here. But we believe if this 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 unit's elite and it's going to be able to ultimately 
And look, we just saw it, right? I think so much of it is recency bias. We just saw it in the AFC divisional round with the Bills and the Chiefs, two teams with good defenses, you know, not great, but like I'd say the Bills defense is pretty damn good. And they got absolutely cut to pieces, just like the, just like the Chiefs defense got cut to pieces, you know, by these offenses. And I think that's kind of the vision of time. Like, let's just put together this freaking buzzsaw on that side mm -hmm. and let's go get it and, and see if we can have the ball last and score and win, win another 12 games. Yeah, the way you put it, I mean, and let me get you, we'll get you out of here on this, uh, yeah. about Money Smith, because really well put. Um, Steve Keim has been a polarizing guy. Um, I think he's the worst drafting um, by, by the numbers GM since he's been drafting since 2013. But he's also pulled off some sugar-coated band-aiding trades. <laughs> You know, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, Rodney Hudson, et cetera. And people wonder why the Cardinals don't have draft capital or why they're always up against the cap because he can't hit on draft day. From a national perspective, um, what are your th – like, what grade would you give Steve Kime since he drafted Kyler Murray? Let's let's cut it at the knees there. The last yeah. four years, what grade would you give Steve Kime overall? Well, I guess, look, I think I think it's not, it's, it's not fair to just grade him individually. Like, I think that's what people don't realize is how much weight does Cliff Kings, you, know, you have to have harmony, right? Like, like, I feel like things have changed since Brandon Staley arrived. Yeah. You know, like Tom Telesco's changed a little bit and, and Dean and John Spanos have changed a little bit with how they operate since Staley arrived. Like they, they are in, they, you know, Staley came to them. This is my vision. And I think everybody's like, you know what? We like that vision. Let's go execute it. So I think some of that is also on Cliff, right? So I think Steve believes in Cliff Kingsbury. So I, to me, they're married. Like, I don't think you grade Steve without grading Cliff. I think it's like, hey, I believe in this guy. I believe in his vision. So like the one thing I'll give Steve an A for, because nobody, and that sounded weird. I will give Steve <laughs> Kime an A for, not Steve an A for. Um, yeah. One thing I'll give him an A for is, dude, Drafting Kyler the year after you traded up to get Josh Rosen, that's a huge move. And it's a great move, clearly. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's – there are so few GMs that would be willing to do that. And the fact that he did it has completely changed the course of this franchise. So, like, to me, that's th – this era of Arizona Cardinals football that is going to be defined by Kyler Murray over the next 10, 12 years, that's time. You know, and it's not just, oh, well, he had the number one pick and he was the best quarterback. No. Yeah, the number one pick. He had just drafted Josh Rosen the year before. Kyler Murray's five foot eight, and he freaking took the guy. So that's like to me, that's where it all kind of you know that's your foundation. Um, He's five ten and a half, look? money. I mean, can we not? Can we not slander? We talked all this good stuff. I'm giving. Yeah. I'm about to give you credit about the positivity. Sorry. Locked on Cardinals. You want the positivity? Damn it! Sorry. You just got the positivity. He, he's not five ten and a half. He's five. He's maybe, listen, I'm 5'10 and a half. I am not tall and I'm taller than him. So okay. he is not 5'10 and a half. He might be 5'9 and a half. And I said 5'8. Okay, that's mean. 5'8's mean. That's that. I didn't mean for it to come out like me being mean. I'm just saying guys that aren't six foot one at least don't go number one overall. And the guy went and then kind of took him and he's incredible. It doesn't matter how tall he is. Who cares? The guy is freaking insane, crazy good. Um, but he ain't five ten and a half. You know what? I, you know what, I ladies and gentlemen. Chase, I, I saw him standing next to Chase Edmonds in that preseason <laughs> game when we were out there, and I was walking the field, and he was right in front of me. I was walking the back of the end zone, and I was like, "Holy crap, he's short!" I did not realize he was that. Sh I mean, look, the thing about Kyler though is he's thick, dude. Yeah. Like you can be short and be thick and be stout, and you're okay. You know, if you're short and you're thin, like you're almost better off being built like he is with that heavy trunk, you know, and that power in his legs, as opposed to being six foot two, you know, and 195 pounds and narrow shoulder because you get broken half. Like yeah. I would rather have a guy that looks like Kyler than someone that's kind of narrow shouldered and spindly like a Teddy Bridgewater that I'm always worried about, um, even though he's got the height. So... Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to. Just uh, we're just digging out of a. I'm that's a just short guy, digging. so like it's like I'm not. Like, I'm not someone who's gonna like short shame. I'm not. A I'm just dude. giving you crap. I'm just giving yeah. you crap. I mean, my favorite stat, and I'll get you. My favorite stat is that Brock Osweiler in Houston, Kyler's last year in college had more balls batted down than Kyler did in college. Okay, yeah, so a exactly. football or whatever it is, and I'm I'm just giving a hard time at Matt Money Smith on Twitter. Pedro some money, Monday through Friday. Chargers play-by-play. -play. Dude, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. Happy to do it, Alex. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. We'll talk to you tomorrow.